All right, we're going to start this month off with a delivery from KLR Auto. All right, this is a double diaphragm brake booster as fitted to the six wheel drive Land Rover Parentes. So I've already replaced the brake booster, which KLR also kindly sent free of charge. They've sent this free of charge by way of a sponsorship. So if you want to say thank you to them, there's a couple of links below. Um, if you use those links, it'll let them know that I sent you. Helps everybody out if you do that. Um, but well, yes. Today, we're doing a bit of work on the six wheel drive ambulance. Today, we're changing the brake booster after I've already done the master. But before we even get started, there's a problem. I picked this up to uh, move it out here and uh, the plunger here went pop and now there's a rattle inside and uh, it's gone off into the side somewhere. That's going to be a big problem. Um, we're going to have to fix that. However, one of my problems I noticed straight away, this check valve is nice and tight. This check valve is not nice and tight. It could be some of our problem. Two hours later. Okay, sometime later I took the um, dump it ground, it is the back of my 4 took the master, or the booster rather, up to a mechanic that I know. I know a couple of mechanics that have got a long history of working on Land Rovers. And in any case, he knew exactly what to do. He pulled the check valve out, gave it a rattle around, first bit popped out, shoved the air compressor in there, blew the little rubber pad around until it landed at the bottom, fished it out with a pair of angled needle nose pliers. Took him five minutes. Now, at the current state I'm in, uh, I have the same problem I did when I started all of this, is that uh, as soon as I put vacuum on this, the pedal goes straight to the floor. A lot of people said I need the bench bleed, the master, and all that sort of stuff. And uh, yes, they're correct. However, the problem is no different to when I started all of this to start with. I may have a vacuum leak. I may have a crook, um, what are we, uh, check valve in here. I may have a crook booster as well. So we're just replacing stuff till we find something that works. Today we're changing the booster and we're changing the vacuum lines. All right, first order of duty, we've got to get this guy out of the way. This radiator header tank. All right, we've got our nuts off here. They go in the tool tray, um, which is left over from a tool trolley I bought to make a generator frame. As our, well, oh, and Careful again of the chains falling off this, touching the positive line, although this one should be easy as I replaced it just the other day and I put amphitheses on the nuts. And the reason we have the magnet on a stick is I just dropped a nut. Now I only have one nut. All right, let's not rock around. A magnet that's a bit bigger. Well, giant magnet or not, still couldn't find it, so uh, my nuts are about 40 years old anyway, if they could use replacing, so we'll do that. Now we need to loosen this. Alright, now hopefully this gives us enough room to get that off. We want to disconnect my radio here, get that out of the way. Alright, according to the RPS, from inside the vehicle, remove the split pin <laughs> on the brake pedal. Uh, yeah, um, I don't think so, guys. What I did mention is uh, these caps on either side you can peel off. Uh, if I can do that around the camera, I may not be able to. There we go. That gives us access to the pin, so that's the side it comes out. I guess there's a split pin on the other side. Now we get into the bit that I have to do by feel, because I can't see this. That feels like it. Now, again, I can't see in here. Feels like there's a split pin in there, though. All right, with a step ladder, I can just see things. Um, if I can get that bit. I think that's doing it. Well, I got it. But that's like my entire day getting that out. All right. Split pin. Hardest part of the whole job is that. If I can get my needle nose pliers in the back of this, I might be able to give it a tap. All right, there we go. All right, there we go. That's why we use magnet on a stick. All right, 
I need this satisfying sound. All right. Cheers. Oh, that one's in a tight spot. I'm gonna have to use a socket for that. Maybe the Knipex will maneuver it enough to get it out. So in a pretty typical turn of events, I do need a crow's foot spanner. I just happen to have a 14 mil. I have a reducer and I have a ratchet. So that means we can do this sort of crazy stuff now. Let's see how we go. Get in like that. At least loosened it. <laughs> the weird tools you got to use sometimes. Right. And success. All right, I'm going to get some new nuts soon. Now we're loose, we can pull it out. <laughs> it's almost jumping out on its own. Now, tricky bit. We don't want to bust lines or short out. Now that's the negative terminal, that's the safe one. That's our positive, we don't want to touch that. This is where you need extra pair of hands. This little thing's in the way. Right. Fast, fast, and we're free. And there's a rando zip tie hanging down here. Ah, now I can get to my steering column. I might try and grease that up or something while I'm in here. Good chance to have a look around while I've got things out that aren't normally out. Now, one of the members of uh, one of the Facebook groups warned me to be careful of the length of the yoke. This is our old one. I know this is not an accurate way of measuring, but we'll give it an idea if it's different. So that one comes to 25 mil. Um, this one also comes to 25 mil. The length of the yoke on both of these is the same. So that's a good, uh, a good sign. I guess relative to the top here, we're sitting out about 15 mil. This one's sitting out about the same. So. They look to be identical. It's worth noting that the length of the yoke is also adjustable um, and they appear to be adjusted to the same length. Fun of games. Working out here to get everything back in the hole again. But, uh, no, that went in fairly well. Okay. Ah, you're not going to believe this. The yoke has lined right up on the pedal perfectly. First shot. Uh, that's, that's usually a sign that something else is going to go wrong. Alright, so I had to scrounge through my kit and I've got these guys. They're a bigger outer diameter but they're the same thread and they go on easily. And I've got five of them. Um, so that should be good, that should do both sides. Alright. One on here to retain it. Posty's on his way past. See if he's got anything for me. Well, sadly, Posty doesn't love me today. Alright, the hardest part of the day getting this pin in. So I've put a bit of grease on the pin which helped it go in. But also I found the trick was to get the screwdriver up behind the pedal, pull the pedal about a half a millimetre forwards and then it drops straight in. So if you've got two people, get somebody to just put their fingers on the pedal gently. And I mean gently, you don't want to cut your hands off. And um push it through so now I can put the split pin in from this side where it's way more accessible now in the RPS they say don't reuse your old split pins that is really really important this one split pin if this fails it can lead to a very deadly situation like your brakes not working if this busts it allows that pin to eventually rattle out and if that rattles out your brakes do absolutely nothing so this split pin is probably one of the more important parts in this whole vehicle I'm going to do this uh, without the camera rolling so I don't get distracted. Right, split pins in, put these caps in, my SD card's running out of space. Probably because I forgot to clear the old footage off when I plugged it into GoPro quick. So I'll uh, wash hands and uh, we'll clean the camera off and uh, we'll finish this up. And uh, whenever we're cleaning up, uh, I'm using grit mitts. These guys have uh, been in from the start of the channel here too. Good stuff. Not bad for a quick clean. All right, lunch break's over, and uh, I was right. The GoPro had not deleted the last um, 
like weeks worth of recording. That's looking good. Oh, now that went in easy. <laughs> I'm not used to car parts going in easy. I guess I'm not used to having new car parts. Now, before we hook vacuum up and do much else, let's check our pedal. That is totally, totally different. Absolutely, totally different. There's no vacuum on it. All I've done is change the booster. Oh, oh my God, that feels so much better. Now, for my own sanity, we're gonna replace these lines. And uh, this one looks to be getting a little bit worn as well. And this whole assembly is floating around, rubbing on stuff everywhere. There is a brake reservoir, a uh, vacuum reservoir under the panel here somewhere, but I think I can get to the hose clamp. We'll do that one last. Yeah, where did this bit go? In there somewhere. Oh, there I think. Alright, time for the acid test. This is where we see if we've still got uh, air in the lines. No, she doesn't sink to the floor anymore. It's slowly sinking very slowly and it stops about there they certainly don't feel spongy anymore that goes rock hard very slowly so it's possible I think I've got a bit of vacuum leak somewhere or maybe there's a little bit of air in the line still they still feel totally different to what they were before absolutely totally different Okay, so the vacuum reservoir is working. <laughs> that never used to happen. All right. Well, I guess there's no sense on having the P-clip on here when it's busted, so that can come off. We'll put another one on later. All right, I've left the hardest one for last. I can see it there though. Um, let's see if I can at least loosen this hose clamp. This also seems to be the softest pipe of the lot. Now this one's pretty hard to even get a camera on. I can see it and I can turn the hose clamp which is very loose. Alright, I got it out. No idea how I'm going to get it back on from underneath though. Alright, we got it on. It's hanging out the bottom. A little bit of help with some plumber's grease. Now we've got to get it up through the top with everything. That's going to be fun. Maybe a piece of coating of wire will help. I'm hoping we have breaks after all of this effort. sound I think that's just the um, that will be the header tank that I haven't got a bolt on yet so uh, we're gonna roll it forward in just a little bit and see if it stops before we hit the fence oh she stops properly go backwards again oh I don't think it's ever stopped that good all right I'm gonna take it round to the mechanic have a chat to him, and then we'll take it for test drive. Right, we're in a service 
road pretty safe. Nobody around behind. Okay, brakes. Oh, okay. I had to pump that. So yeah, there's probably air in the system somewhere. Yeah, alright, we're gonna re-bleed the brakes, but definitely master cylinder was part of it. I think booster was also part of it. And we've also got air in the line. So it was a complex problem with well, a whole bunch of things going on. But I'm happy, things are working. Alright, that's the brake booster done. Uh, we did the master just before that. You can find that video as well. There will be some links below um, to both KLR Auto and a few other bits and pieces. Also, special thanks to um, Grit Mitts for sending me the cleaner. And uh, exceptional thanks, as always, for KLR Auto. You guys are absolute lifesavers. You've really saved my bacon here. Um, there will be definitely links to them. If you use those links, they will let KLR know that I sent you which helps everybody and uh, they know that my subscribers are coming to check them out it helps them uh, potentially help me out again in the future so uh, in any case thanks for watching guys hope it was informative we'll see you in the next one and uh, I'll try and uh, do these guys a bit more justice in future